The bus hasn't been found. The bodies of the kids are still in the bus. We have a two-mile vantage point here of the highway, and the river makes a bend around in front of us here. And, of course, all of the working crews uh, and the people are gathered mainly on the opposite side of the river. At this stage, the river uh, is filled with boats of all types and fashion and have so far been unsuccessful in locating the bus. 55-gallon uh, drums, and they intend to place this in the river there and send uh, divers down to try and locate and hook on to the bus. Well, it's completely dark here now. We're still standing beside the muddy, swirling waters of the Big Sandy River, three miles south of Prestonsburg. It's seven o'clock, and they have just notified us here that the rescue operation has been called off until daylight tomorrow morning. This is by far the most tragic event that has ever taken place here in this part of the country. Even entire families are lying at the bottom of this cold, muddy river here tonight. Paul, is there anything that you'd like to add before we return to our studios? My dad Ernest said they called the parents over by the loudspeaker and asked them to line up those parents who have children in the school bus and asked them to vote whether they should continue working tonight. And the parents voted, I understand, to call it off until tomorrow. They have the entire river bank here for, I'd say, a thousand feet each way from the rescue scene, completely dotted or completely lined with electric lights. And the divers, I believe we mentioned earlier that they do have divers from Huntington, and all rescue operations have been called off. As I said earlier, as many as three or four kids out of one family has been reported missing and are still lying at the bottom of this cold, muddy river here tonight. Paul, uh, do you have the name or do you remember the name of the fellow that lives right back of us here that uh, had, I believe, three kids in this bus? Mr. J.B. Goble, I think, was his name. He had two boys and, and one daughter in that uh, accident this morning. We have talked with several people here tonight, and they all agree that this is by far the most tragic situation that has ever taken place here in eastern Kentucky. So this looks like a separate memorial here. It says, Lauren, 1992-2010, Pennington. So we're in Floyd County, Kentucky on a dreary October day. And we we're doing a story that we had decided about a year ago that we weren't gonna do. I had got set to do it a couple times and then we discussed it and backed out of it. But we decided 
We're ready. So we're doing the Floyd County bus crash that happened February 28th, which is Leo's birthday, yeah. 1958. As you can see, the big sandy river down here, you can kind of see it through the trees here. Well, the collision and plunge into the river involving a school bus near Prestonsburg, Kentucky was the most disastrous bus accident in history of the United States at the time. It was then rivaled in 1988, also in Kentucky, by another bus accident, which would change rules in Kentucky buses forever. So it was, you know, February 28th is generally pretty cold in, in Kentucky. A lot of times there's ice, snow, but in general, it's still always, you know, it's our worst month. So it was a cold and cloudy morning after a period of heavy rains. And it had been frozen, but it was starting to thaw out. So the river was pretty high. A Floyd County school bus that was loaded with 48 elementary and high school students bound for school at Prestonsburg on U.S. Route 23, right here, for an unknown reason, struck the rear of a wrecker truck and plunged down this embankment into the swollen waters below. They still to this day don't know exactly why the driver crashed, why he wasn't paying attention, you know, it happens. Which I'm not saying that's an excuse. I'm just saying you can't you can't figure that one out. Uh, he could have been doing anything. So once it plunged into this the water down here, which is the Levisa Fork of the Big Sandy River, it was then swept downstream and submerged. So 22 children escaped the bus in the first few minutes as it became fully submerged in the raging um, floodwaters, and they made it to safety. However, 26 other children and the bus driver, John Alex, died. And they died by drowning. Everybody survived the impact, but they just couldn't get out of the bus. Kentucky National Guard and other authorities and agencies then responded and the bus was finally located and was then removed from the river 55 hours later. So keep in mind, you know, these parents had been notified, the ones with miss missing children. And they were probably standing around here, waiting to see if by some miracle, maybe your child had washed down shore. Maybe they were, they just hadn't made it back up here yet. I mean, your mind never wants to settle on the fact that that someone you love is gone if there's any kind of hope whatsoever and sometimes you do get that miracle but in this this one the case for these people but they didn't know that at the time um over 500 kentucky national guardsmen were activated during a 69-day search and recovery operation for victims of the incident on a side note a lot of the parents and family would stand on the bridge and wash wait to see if their kids would wash downstream did, yeah. so a, a lot of the parents would wait on the bridge and see if their children would just wash downstream and they knew they weren't alive they just wanted to get the bodies and bury them, bury them. i mean can you even imagine so the whole area was completely frozen um people that were involved in the rescue were affected severely uh reporters were affected the whole community was just it, it was traumatizing on, on a level that Devastated. is really hard to, to fathom. Kentucky guardsmen involved count the Prestonsburg bus tragedy as the grimmest state duty they had ever performed. The accident drew nationwide sympathy for the parents of the children and respect for the stoic courage of the Prestonsburg people. Wow. 
So even now, today, the 27-person death toll is tied with the Carrollton, Kentucky bus disaster in 1988 for the highest number of fatalities resulting from a bus accident. Both accidents occurred here in Kentucky, and in each one, as I said earlier, the victims were all, all survived the initial collisions, but they're unable to safely evacuate the school buses. Afterwards, after the 1988 accident, Kentucky finally changed its public school bus equipment re requirements, and it now requires a higher number of emergency exits than any other state in the country. So, to sum up what happened, so this is the sum up and the aftermath of what happened, but it leaves out all the personal details of that day. No one can ever really put into words the horrific sights In the aftermath of the unimaginable tragedy, the real horror of this story came later as parents and friends of lost children stood on the bridges until summertime waiting for bodies to surface. Some families lost as many as three children and had to post outlooks downstream to watch for them. Some children went back into the bus to retrieve siblings and never came back out again. Some lost their only children. So I want to point something out here on this sign. If you notice all the names that are the same, two Cisco's, two Kleins, the three Dar Goebbels, the Darby's, two Gerald's, two Jervis, three Jervis, excuse me, and two Matney. And I'm not saying that the other deaths don't matter, but what I am saying is some people lost two and three children that day. Some people sent their children off to school and came home to an empty house, empty beds, empty clothes. They had to completely, you know, I mean, these were grown tr children. It's not like these were young parents that could all just go on to, to have new families. Not that they would want to if they could, but you get what I'm saying. It completely, no, no marriages, no grandchildren. It just seems so unfair, you know? So on the bottom here, it says the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So all of these children, all these children and driver is buried local, but today we're gonna especially visit James Goble, John Goble, and Anna Goble, and pay some respects to them. Now this is the hill directly behind the sign. Right here is where the bus went over the hill into the river. And you know, like, like Heather said, you know, it was after a rain and the river was swollen. And so it was considerably deeper than it is right now. And I can't see the bottom. So it was obviously pretty deep and very cold weather. January, February 28th, very cold day. We think we're on the right track now. Had to move up a little bit. I believe that's it right up here. I think I see the children. Yep, that's them.
<coughs> James Edward Goble, September 20th, 1945 to February 28th, 1958. Son of James B. and Virginia Spears Goble. This is Anna Laura Goble. December 4th, 1948 to February 28th, 1958. Daughter of James B. and Virginia Spears Goble. Christ loved her and took her home. And John Spencer Goble, born January 1st, 1947. They spelled January wrong. And passed away February 28th, 1958. Son of James B. and Virginia Spears Goble. Christ loved him and took him home. And right here is Virginia and James. Just on this perched way up here on top of a hill in this massive graveyard it goes on out through that way as well just beside US 23 just outside Pikeville and here they are Do you imagine I mean three children losing one child is a nightmare scenario. Could you imagine losing three and not knowing? And when you do find out, it's it's not good news. And then here we are. Horrific bus wreck. You kind of like to think that a lot of these events had a silver lining, but this one didn't really have much of a silver lining. I mean, some some bus regulations were changed, and you know, a few lives were saved, but you know, that's about it, really. This is J.C. Global, December twenty first, nineteen o three, to April twenty seventh, nineteen twenty seven. This is John M. Goble, 1869 to 1942, son of Isaac and Susan Woods Goble. Laura B., 1880 to 1948, daughter of Ben and Mary Neal Ferguson. And the whole family's together. hard to imagine isn't it just to wrap your head around having to buy three headstones not one not just one one's bad enough three is if one's a nightmare scenario I'm not really sure what three is to be honest it's a crushing blow I'm sure you know, just destroy your entire world, all of your plans. <laughs>